Henry Books is one of the companies that you'll be using in your homework exercises throughout the course. This uh, video will give you an introduction to the layout of the Henry Books company data set. The first thing you have to do is locate the data set. In order to do that, you can log into Cengage Brain and download all the data sets from the uh, publisher's website, or I've already downloaded them and placed them into the doc sharing area of this course for you. As you work through the examples in the course, make sure with each example that you carefully read to make sure you're starting with uh, that whether you should be starting with the original data set, in other words, download the data set new for that particular exercise or continue with the data set from the exercise perhaps that you just finished previously. So we're going to take a look at it in an access format. The first time you open it, depending on your version of access, most likely you're going to have some type of a security warning here across the top of your screen and you're going to have to enable the content in order to make any changes or modifications to the data in this data set. Uh, we have six tables to begin with. This is a, a book uh, sales company and we're taking a look first at the authors. So we've got a table where each author has been given a unique ID and then we have the last and first name of the author separately. If we take a look at the design of the table, the ID is a numeric data type and the text, uh, the last, first and last names are text data types. We have a table that's full of the books. You, know, you can see here the title of the book, publisher code, type of book, and whether or not it's paperback. Each book has been given a book code. If we take a look at the uh, design view, we'll see the book code is the primary key and it is text. That's because it has an alphanumeric on it, so it's not number, it is a text field. And this is the first time you're seeing a yes, no field. Um, a yes no field in the table view or form view is going to appear as a as a checkbox as you saw here where you can check it um, on or off that's how it looks in access um, behind the scenes there's actually a zero or a one stored in there and we'll talk about that more when we start using this data set in a program other than access the branch uh, table shows the four different stores that Henry Books owns. So you've got the branch name and location and again each one uh, has been given a branch number. That's your primary key when we look at the design. We can see it's a numeric field and everything else is a text field. Uh, this is telling us the copy. For example, you'll see here that book code 0180. We actually have two copies of that same book. So when we take a look at the design view, you're going to see a three field primary key. It's the combination of the book code, the branch number, and the copy number together that I uniquely identify each record in this table. In addition to those three, we have the quality of the book and the price. Then we have the publisher table. Each publisher has been given a unique two alpha character identification and then the name of the publisher and the city. Um, for some reason the author has sometimes put state in here and sometimes has not. I think his thought is everybody knows New York is in, is in New York. Um, usually you should have the city and state as separate fields when working in any type of a database. Uh, but you can see here when we look at the design that the publisher is a text field and publisher code is a text field and set as the primary key with the other two fields just as text fields. And the last one here is a rote table and I believe this is telling us which author wrote which book and then the sequence that they wrote it in. And so if we take a look at the design, we're going to see the book code and the author number together are the primary key sequences, another type of numeric format. So I'm going to go ahead and close the six tables. This data set comes with two queries already. The first query, books by title author, is showing us data. If we take a look at the design from four different tables, Notice the relationships are shown in the top half of the query. Um, we'll look at the relationships window. I should have done that um, first, but we'll finish with the queries. Um, so we've got the 
four uh, tables at the top no criteria on any of these so this is just allowing me to see information from the four different tables together in one view a query is often referred to in many database circles as a view and the other query we have books on hand Looks like they've changed the font to make this one quite a bit smaller on your screen. Uh, again, is showing us um, all six tables, and we have data, and you can see here the title, the field is the name, is the name of the field, and then the table is which table that actually that field is located in, and looks like we're hitting most of the tables there as well. So we'll go ahead and close the queries. I'm going to go over here to the database tools relationships and take a look at the relationships that are established between the tables and again you saw those automatically come in through the into the queries if you establish re the relationship in the relationships window it will carry through to the query if you didn't take the time to establish the relationship in the relationships window then you have to establish the relationship within each query uh, we'll talk about that a little more in chapter two so one author wrote many books one book is in the wrote table many times um, so I guess their thought here is one author writes many books it's possible for you to have a a book um, written by multiple authors so this is allowing us uh, that sequence is telling us you know multiple authors of the same book um, we've got one publisher publishes many books one book we could have many copies of um, one branch could have many copies so this is the actual inventory of the books themselves um, which book it is which branch it's located at and the copy number you together uniquely identify the book and then of course the quality and price of the book so that's our relationships window Additionally, the data set begins with seven forms. Forms, remember, are a way for your users to input and edit the data in the tables. A good user interface would never allow the user to actually be in the tables themselves. They would do all of their input, editing, deleting, etc. through the forms. The author form links to the author table. Again, remember, I can find that out if I'm not sure what where this is getting its data. I can go to my design view of the form, double click the little box to the left of the ruler, and now I can see the properties of the form, and this is where I'm seeing the record sources author. Again, our author did not use our textbook author did not use any naming conventions, so I don't know if that's a table or a query. If they'd used naming conventions, they would have named it something like TBL author so that I did not have to take the time to look back to see which it was. Fortunately, our um, designer or, or author of the textbook did not ever name, uh, give a name, similar name to a table in a query. So if it's a one word name like that, it's most likely a table. But the record source is where I find that out. I'm going to go ahead and close the properties. I've got a book form. This form has a subform inside of it. Let's say I'm not really sure which subform that is. If I go into the design view of that form, I notice this is the subform in the design view. It has its own little property sheet here, which I can double click on. And from there I can actually see what the which form it is by looking at the name of the form. And I'm seeing a query inside of this form rather where it's getting its data so it is the wrote here it is wrote subform so that is this one I'm gonna go have to close in order to take a look at that subform so this subform here is actually pulling into here the book inventory form also has a subform so again, I can go into the layout, or excuse me, design of that, bring up the properties of the subform, and see it's the copy subform. Go ahead and close those so I can take a look at that subform. Subform is just data, it's not pretty, because the only time the user will see this subform 
is inside of this form. One form is embedded inside of the other and then hooked together. Uh, and finally I have a branch, a publisher uh, form to wrap that up. Forms, remember, are designed for users to input, edit, delete, etc. data into tables on the screen. Reports are designed to pull uh, data sets or views and print onto paper. So I have a books report, a branches report, and a publisher report. Similar to forms, I can go to the design of that report, bring up the properties of the report, and see the record source. Where is this particular report getting its records? Each of our reports is tied to a table or a query. And that is an overview of the data set you're starting with for Henry Books.